Welcome to this A-level physics lesson on Coulomb's law. So what we're going to look at here is the law that governs the force between two charged particles. Now we've already dealt with Newton's law of universal gravitation. We'll remember that that law is the force between two masses is going to be equal to minus g, where g is the gravitational constant, negative because it is an attractive force, and this is multiplied by m1, m2, all divided by r squared. Now, as you'll find in many cases within the course, this equation is given to you in the booklet, and in fact this equation can be used to tell you the definition. Because the definition of Newton's law of universal gravitation is that the force acting between two masses is proportional to the product of those masses and it is force is also inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. So if it were to ask you in an examination situation what is the definition of Newton's universal law of gravitation you would say Force is proportional, the force between two masses is proportional to the product of those masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. Now we can do the same thing for Coulomb's law. So let's just remove Newton's law of universal gravitation. Coulomb's law is extremely similar. The force between two charged particles is going to be proportional to. So we're going to have an, a, well, a constant, which is made up of several pieces. Okay? This constant is 4 pi epsilon naught, which we'll deal with in a moment. And that is multiplied by q1, q2 over r squared. So here, just like with Newton's law of universal gravitation, we can also say, for Coulomb's law, that the force between two charged particles is going to be proportional to the product of the charges, and it's going to be, force is going to be inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. So, if you are stuck for the definition, look at your equation booklet and recognise that we have a constant here, and we also have the product of the charges, and we have the inverse square of the distance between those charges. This is what we know as an inverse square law. The reason for it being an inverse square law is simply down to geometry. In a three-dimensional situation, if you have a sphere and it has radial field lines, you know that if you double the distance, that's going to quadruple the surface area of that sphere. And so you can imagine it a little bit like the intensity is decreased because it's spread out over a much bigger surface. And because double the distance means four times larger surface, that means that we have an inverse square law. Okay? So we have, for instance, the surface area of a sphere, A equals 4 pi r squared. Okay, And so you can imagine those field lines spread out if the distance to that sphere or from that sphere gets twice as big, the actual area of that sphere gets four times larger, and so as a result those field lines are all four times further apart. So we have an inverse square law. Now, let's remove that and have a look at this quantity epsilon naught. Now this constant here, 4 pi epsilon 0, is essentially how we modify the, uh, or the pro constant of proportionality it is for these factors. Now, epsilon 0 happens to be 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12 farads per meter. Now, this E0, or epsilon naught, this is called the permittivity of free space. And the permittivity of free space essentially tells us how easily an electric field can propagate through space. So we can think about it as 
it is permitting an electric field to propagate. And by permitting the electric field to propagate, that tells us how easily those two charges influence one another, and therefore the magnitude of the force between those two. So, what you need to be able to do with this equation is if it gives you two point charges, for instance, you will be able to work out the force between those two point charges. So let's do, do a quick example. I'll get my calculator. Let's imagine we have two point charges. We've got, we'll start with two positive point charges. Let's imagine that we have a plus 20 nanocoulombs and we have a plus 10 nanocoulombs. What we do, we need to know the distance between them as well. Let's say that they are a distance of uh, 0.5 meters. Okay, so what we can do is we can put the numbers into the equation. If we want to know the force between these, we simply do the force is going to be equal to 1 over 4 pi times 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12. And that is going to be multiplied by Q1, Q2, which is 20 times 10 to the minus 9, times 10 times 10 to the minus 9, all over 0.5 squared. Okay, we can put that all in our calculator in one go, or you can simplify it by changing that to 0.25, or you can plug these together and say that, well, 20 times 10 is 200, so that's going to be 200 times 10 to the 18. You can simplify it when putting it in your calculator. Sometimes that is useful because it means you're less likely to make a mistake on this thing. So, let's type in our numbers. So, on fraction, we need 1 over 4 shift pi times 8.85 times 10 to the power of minus 12. And we're going to times this fraction by, this time, another fraction, we have... 20 times 10 to the power of minus 9, and then times that by 10 times 10 to the power of minus 9. And that is all over 0.5 squared. And we have here that the force between these two particles, F, is going to be 7.19. So we'll call it 7.2. 7.2 times 10 to the minus 6 newtons. Okay? Now, I have given two significant figures here, although technically, as you can see, I should have given two significant figures here. If I wanted this to be a, a more accurate answer, based on the number of significant figures I've given. Really, because I only had one significant figure, the answer should be one significant figure. Uh, that was just a mistake because I'm just doing this off the cuff. Now, lastly, I want you to imagine, instead of being positive 20 and positive 10, what if this was negative? Well, if this was negative, we'd find that the force between them was negative, and if that was the case, what we would find is that the force is attractive. So you notice that we have an attractive force when one of them is negative, and that's given by a negative force. Meanwhile, you might have a repulsive force when the two are positive, and that's why you would have a positive force.